Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Lame duck GOP just made disgusting daycare insult about White House, he got destroyed. After reading the handwriting on the wall and realizing that he would not win re-election, Republican Senator Bob Corker of Tennessee has decided that he will not run against for U.S. Senate. In sour grapes fashion, he has decided to take swipes at President Donald Trump, who he does not support. President Donald Trump recently called Corker out for opposing him, saying on Twitter, Senator Bob Corker begged me to endorse him for re-election in Tennessee. I said no and he dropped out, said he could not win without my endorsement. He also wanted to be Secretary of State, I said no thanks. He is also largely responsible for the horrendous Iran deal. Trump continued, hence, I would fully expect Corker to be a negative voice and stand in the way of our great agenda. Didn't have the guts to run. Instead of reacting with graciousness and common decency to President's very honest criticism, Senator Corker attempted to play comedian and lashed out at him with a cheap shot about his age, tweeting, It's a shame the White House has become an adult daycare center. Someone obviously missed their shift this morning. The blowback to establishment Republican Corker's smear has been brutal. Wrote one internet commenter astutely, It is a shame that the kids in the Senate don't grow up and do what is best for our country. Yes Corker you need to be in time out. As do most in the Senate. Added another, I think used to be that when you joined Congress, you were assured of feeding at the pig trough and becoming wealthy. Trump is trying to put an end to this and the swamp is fighting back. Are you glad Swamp Monster Corker will be gone once his term is up? FBI agent reveals multiple leads in Vegas shooter case, they're all across the world. 64-year-old retired real estate investor and gambling aficionado Steve Paddock left behind very few clues when he shot himself after killing 58 people at the Route 91 Harvest Country Music Festival in Las Vegas and sending more than 500 others to the hospital. Both local law enforcement and the FBI, however, have been working hard to follow what little information they have to finally get a better idea of how Paddock carried out his unthinkable crime and whether or not he had any assistance. The FBI finally held a press conference to tell the public about advances that they have made in the investigation. The briefing was conducted by Special Agent Aaron Rouse, who is in charge of the Las Vegas Division of the FBI. He urged people to have patience with the investigation since it is so unusual and complex. However, Agent Rouse informed the briefing's attendees, Additionally, we have multiple leads across the United States and all across the world for our legal industries determining the whereabouts of the panel of the people involved in this investigation, and that leads grows. Aaron added, A lot of these leads will go nowhere but we have to follow them, and that's going to take some time. In a different press briefing, Las Vegas Sheriff Joseph Lombardo stated that a possibility exists that Paddock had help, at very least in putting together his arsenal of weapons and ammunition. What do you think these new international leads will turn up? California can now imprison you for calling a transgender person by the wrong name. Have you ever wanted to call Caitlyn Jenner, Bruce Jenner? Well, now in California, you can actually go to jail for doing something like that. Seriously. Democratic Governor Jerry Brown signed the LGBT Senior Bill of Rights. This has a law that will allow up to a year of prison time for people who willfully and repeatedly refuse to use a transgender resident's preferred name or pronouns. The author of the bill Senator Scott Weiner attacked religious freedom. According to him, religious freedom stops applying when you leave your house. Everyone is entitled to their religious view. But when you enter the public space, when you are running an institution, you are in a workplace, you are in a civil setting, and you have to follow the law, said Weiner. 
Weiner released a statement after Brown signed the bill into law. Our LGBT seniors built the modern LGBT community and led the fight for so many of the rights our community takes for granted today. It is our duty to make sure they can age with the dignity and respect they deserve, Weiner wrote. I want to thank Governor Brown for joining our coalition in supporting this bill, which will make a real difference in people's lives. The LGBT Senior Bill of Rights is an important step in our fight to ensure all people are treated equally regardless of their sexual orientation or gender identity, he wrote. The transgender rule currently only applies to nursing homes. But it is only a matter of time before it will apply to the public. You can see the bill for yourself here. Chelsea Clinton attacks all Republicans after being called out for Harvey Weinstein hypocrisy. Democrats have been going after each Fox News anchor, one by one, trying to make them look like sexual harassers. However, Democratic donor and Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein has been caught sexually harassing a large number of women and Democrats don't even want to acknowledge it. Chelsea Clinton who had been seen in a number of friendly photos with the sexual predator decided to attack Republicans after being called out. Chelsea Clinton shared a link to Think Progress editor Judd Legum's rant against Weinstein. Weinstein's conduct, as documented in the net, is despicable. Also despicable are those that are using the story exclusively as a political narrative, with no actual concern for the victims or issue, wrote Legum. Core issue here is not Weinstein's political donations, but the powerful in Hollywood who knew about the conduct but stayed silent. It's an issue of powerful institutions protecting predatory men. If you care about this, you'll talk about that. Instead it's being absorbed by the right into their slime machine, wrote Legum. I wonder if he was this concerned when liberals immediately made the Vegas shooting about politics. This isn't just an effort to weaponize it politically against liberals. It's also an effort to distract from the actual discussion. Fact, most of the folks talking about Weinstein on the far right don't even believe sexual harassment is a problem, wrote Legum. Everyone believes that sexual harassment is a problem. But Chelsea Clinton has never had anything against sharing lies. Police just revealed meaning of strange note Vegas shooter left behind, wow. Investigators looking into the mass murder committed by psychopath Steve Paddock in Las Vegas have had little to go on, since gunman Steve Paddock had virtually no friends and nobody has yet come forward to say that they knew of the attack in advance. However, the first officers who entered the scene at the Mandalay Bay Casino suite that Paddock had rented and subsequently killed himself in following the shootings say that they found a note in the room, handwritten by Paddock himself. Officer Dave Newton of the Las Vegas Police Department's K-9 unit detailed what the contents of the note were, saying that he could see on it he had written the distance, the elevation he was on, the drop of what his bullet was gonna be for the crowd. Continued Officer Newton showing that Paddock's deadly assault it was clearly premeditated, so he had that written down and figured out so he would know where to shoot to hit his targets from there. In the interview, Newton also mentioned what it was like for him when he and fellow officers broke down the door and entered the shooter's hotel suite. Described Newton, very eerie. Yeah, the dust from the explosive breach. And, then you have the flashing lights. And that looked straight, like, out of a movie, you know? Do you find it extra creepy that this note proves Stephen Paddock plotted his mass murder so meticulously? Marine captain makes Pelosi stutter and totally lose it with one simple question about gun control. It is truly sickening how Democrats have been striking while the iron is hot and attempting to push their pet project of restricting American citizens' gun rights in reaction to the recent deadly mass shooting in Las Vegas. Thankfully, regular Americans have been stepping up and asserting their constitutional rights. 
A good example of this occurred when a retired Marine captain and current gun store owner confronted Minority House Speaker Nancy Pelosi with a very basic question during a town hall. Asked former Marine Captain Dan Hinkson of Virginia, referring to mentally unstable shooter Stephen Paddock, my question is. Someone with that kind of motivation, what new law can we put out there that would stop something like this? Pelosi was not able to answer this simple question properly, instead, putting out a jumble of phrases like that we need to come together in a bipartisan way. She continued, repeating herself, that is to have background checks, gun violence prevention background checks, and to have them be effective. Informing Rep. Pelosi that the United States already performs background checks on prospective gun owners, Hinkson stated simply, they're checked. Replied Nancy, losing it, they all get checked. They all get checked. They all get checked. But there are loopholes. She then tripped over herself talking about bump stocks, saying, well, that is something that we should do right away. People were not aware of the bump stock or the bump fire stock, whatever, people call it one thing or another. Do you think mentally failing Pelosi needs to retire? Ryan Zink has incredible news about saving Confederate monuments, lives are furious. Liberals have been trying to use racial politics to get rid of historical monuments that offend them and their whitewashed view of U.S. history. They want statues of Confederate military figures and other offensive people like Christopher Columbus either put in museums or destroyed completely. Thankfully, President Donald Trump's Interior Secretary Ryan Zink declared that no monuments whatsoever that sit on federally owned property will be removed as long as he has final word over them. Stated Secretary Zink to Breitbart's Amanda House, no monuments are going to be removed from federal land. Where do you start and where do you stop? He then pointed out the hypocrisy of liberals wanting Confederate general statues removed while keeping statues of Union generals. Said Ryan, if you're a native Indian, I can tell you, you're not very happy about the history of General Sherman or perhaps President Grant. He added, I think we should never hide from our history or erase our history. I think we should embrace the history and understand the faults and learn from it. But when you try to erase history, what happens is you also erase how it happened and why it happened and the ability to learn from it. Secretary Zink concluded, There's periods in our time that I think it's important to learn and learn a valuable lesson as Americans, why we are what we are, how did we get here, and how to make sure that we create a better future and that is learning from the past, adapting, and making a brighter future for everybody. Are you glad Zinc is acting to preserve our heritage and our history?